it's about time that we finally get to the much requested Cinema Snob episode where I take a look at the ridiculously over the top Christploitation film God's Club. That's the one you wanted to see, right? The Stephen Baldwin classic God's Club. Oh, wait, you wanted me to talk about that God's Not Dead sequel, where instead of Hercules, we get Clarissa Darling. Well, it's too late now. I mean, I already own this fucking thing, so you bet your ass I'm gonna watch it! Smart move with the price sticker. Yeah, we know it's only three bucks, but we still have to tape over Stephen Baldwin's face. And as a sign of disapproval, the movie comes with high marks from the Dove Foundation, because simply writing, this movie sucks, would be too easy. Praise from the Dove Foundation is like praise from Armand White. The only difference is, is I'm pretty sure the Dove Foundation isn't trying to sound smart. Wake up! It's called criticism. I know you don't see it much, but get used to it. The hell? Of course Armand White is the type to Twitter search his own name. Of course he is. But for all you Stebald fans out there, don't worry. They didn't tape over the side of the box. Jesus, that looks like the kind of picture you'd hang up at someone's funeral. I should tell you what this movie is about, but again, the box is handy in that department too. They fought for the school Bible club and won. Well, gee, thanks for that. No need to watch the movie now, you spoiler-happy box. Okay, let's watch the movie anyway. Hmm, <laughs> as ambitious as a PowerPoint presentation on how to save Burger Chef from going out of business. The film is written by John Chadwell, not to be confused with Chad Johnwell. His only other writing credit is for the 1988 horror comedy Midnight Movie Massacre. And I hope it isn't because God's Club took nearly 30 years to write. The film is directed by Jared Cohn, who looks like the real-life version of Gavin Stone. Most of his directing credits are for low-budget horror films such as Little Dead Rotting Hood and Underground Lizard People. Plus, he also has acting credits such as Sharknado, Heart of Sharkness, where he plays David Moore, a fictitious version of Sharknado director Anthony Ferrante. I'm guessing this is more of a Stephen Baldwin passion project than a Jared Cohn passion project. Let's see if Stephen still has some of that magic! Hey Michael, you almost ready? Hey guys, I can get those dishes. What happened to you, man? You were one of the usual suspects! Stephen Baldwin plays Michael Evans, and he looks like a handsome thumb. Michael is a high school teacher who isn't quite into his wife's Bible club. Come on, honey, if you go with me, we can have dinner with your brother, Donald Trump. Thankfully, we're getting to know them as a couple first before we get to the movie's preachiness. There is no place for God in a public school. Don't you get that? I object to public resources being used to promote religious clubs. Or not. And is that Lorenzo Lamas' evil atheist dad? What about the Buddhists, the Jews, the Muslims? Where's their club? You're just mad because they didn't approve your snake eater club. At one point, everyone just looks shocked that Stephen Baldwin actually said something. Nobody's forcing anyone to go. Stuart ain't going. I think everybody just needs to calm down. Yeah, you don't want to get charged with a DWS, drinking while strawmanning. Michael should be more involved with the Bible Club. Listen to how important it is. Littlefield's daughter is talking about what to do if she gets pregnant. And Victor Rivers is walking around listening to music that glorifies drugs and violence. Right? How else can we stop sex education and other non-important issues like that? Eh, whatever. I'm sure their marriage will last a lifetime. Yikes. That's what they get for borrowing Job's car. 
They got hit by a scene transition. I'm guessing so, anyway. We don't see the actual crash. Now is your time to shine, Stephen Baldwin. Okay, don't move. Just, just don't move. No, you're fine, my love. I'm here with you. I'm here with you. Wait, wait, go. Yes, my love. I'm here. For a born-again actor who spends his career making movies like this, he sure acts like he doesn't want to be in them. Hopefully now he's learned his lesson about being indifferent. I, I'll pray with you. I'll, I'll pray with you right now, babe. If only you had been more supportive of her prayer group, then she wouldn't have died. You killed her. Look at the bright side. You have the nicest house out of everyone else on your school's faculty. It's <laughs> months later. How is Michael doing? Took a minute and 8.2 seconds off. Wow, that's great, babe. Are we at least paying you enough for you to lift your head? I think you should get out of the house. No, thank you. I'm fine. I want my dad back. Well, I want the Stephen Baldwin of 1995 back, but we can't have everything. Hell, at this point, I'd even take Biodome Stephen Baldwin. He invites Corbin Burnson over so they can compare and contrast Major League Two and Slapshot Two. This feels like a career intervention. Well, maybe I can finally get that fast food gig I was always dreaming of. Um, where does Stephen Baldwin end and the character begin? However, according to the Dove Foundation, Stephen Baldwin is superb as Michael Evans. So it must be true! I never really liked school that much as a kid. Maybe this is just all for the best. God damn it, you're a fucking liar, Dove Foundation! Can we seriously get some emotion here? I want this Stephen Baldwin! <laughs> yeah, bash that fucker's head in! Michael finally gets back to work. Shouldn't he actually have facial hair for the pivotal shaving of the facial hair moment? Oh hey, thanks for the pizza, director of God's Club. Keep the faith. <laughs> Do they know each other? Does he say that to everyone he delivers pizzas to? Michael may be back to work, but he dares to make the mistake of acknowledging his wife's death. And I thought it would be a good thing to start out this morning with uh, a moment of silence. Okay, nothing wrong with that. I don't see anyone having a problem with this. Oh, right, I forgot. This movie doesn't take place in reality. It's a world where even the mean girls are stereotypical evil movie atheists. Now you have someone to play with again, loser. Hey, I'm talking to you. Bite me. What is with the flat delivery of everyone in this film? This is the one time that I'll encourage all of these high school students to give cocaine a try. Don't bother your dad, honey. He's praying for a fled too. Michael and his daughter, Rebecca, decide that the best way to put their life back together is by starting a school Bible club. And why not? There's a body parts collecting club and a hiking club, which I guess also sells globes. Are they planning on walking the earth? I wonder if they'll get any takers. <sighs> you want to go mess with the Bible now? Ow. All my lead. Hey, look, Jonah Ray and his friend are jokingly joining the club. How important can this club be when they only spent five minutes on their sign? These kids have nothing better to do than to sign up for God's Club, ironically. Just because Stephen Baldwin is there doesn't mean you have to go full 90s. And who the hell is this kid? What about Trudy? What about her? Okay, well, Allison doesn't really like me, and Trudy doesn't really like her, so... I'm... Yeah, why is that? What does she have against Allie? I feel like I'm jumping into the second episode of a shitty teen drama. Who in the fuck is he, and who are you talking about? Mmm, so, I hear you're fast. Uh, I, running. I hear you're a fast runner. Why do you care? I don't know, maybe we could run together? Can you both take an acting class together? You have the chemistry of a banana peel and a waiter carrying a tray of empty dishes. Not that Michael is any more emotional. So what about the Bible Club? How'd you think it went? Even moving your hand is making me fall asleep. 
This movie feels like an old white guy writing for teen girls, cause it is. For Christ's sake, if you want to know the true high school experience, just ask Lorenzo Lamas, he's right there. He was in Greece. And yes, Lorenzo does not approve of God's Club. People have a lot of free time on their hands in this town. I thought you were the sensible one. Actually, it was... Woohoo, bro! You just actually Lorenzo Lamas. That's how Renegade got started. They actually his dead wife. Well, then you ought to get yourself ready for a little disappointment. In two days, we launch our new Bible Club. Well, that's gonna have some consequences. Well, I remember this still being a free country. Can we reenact this same scene, but with Alec Baldwin and Will Arnett's characters from 30 Rock? I'd be very careful what you do or say to those kids. I don't want to hear about any illegal brainwashing. Legal brainwashing, on the other hand, that's perfectly okay. The movie does, however, point out that having an after-hours Bible club on school grounds is perfectly legal. No, as long as it's an extracurricular and there are other options, nothing about it's against the law. So, um, perfect! Uh, the movie's over! Okay, it's not really over, but thanks to the box cover, I already know that they win! With the dark lighting and the sinister music, they're acting like they're gonna send someone to break his fucking legs! Well, they're getting creative with their zooms. That was awkward. Even though Michael is doing nothing illegal, the principal reminds him that this is straw man high, so it really doesn't matter what's legal and what's not. Plus, she is clearly being paid off by the hiking club. Michael can keep his God's club, but only if he follows the rules. There are rules you better follow. Attendance is voluntary. Oh man, he was totally planning on kidnapping people. And here's the God's Club. Huh, I think you'll actually find a copy of this movie in the fantasy section. They come right out and say that they live in a town where there are no churches, implying that Michael and Rebecca may be the only two Christians who live in this town. Don't believe me? Stuart. Paleo what? And the Bible is about the Christian God? Yes, it is. Brain and brain! What is brain? And anyone who believes in him has the opportunity to become a Christian or a Christian, which is where the word Christian comes from. Thanks for the lesson. I now know that the word Christian has the word Christ in it. I'd laugh, but these students are so stupid that they probably needed to be explained this. And that's called the resurrection. What's a resurrection? Crucified? It means nailed to a cross. Whoa, okay. That's messed up. Will someone please just explain what's a resurrection? In these students' defense, the story of Jesus is really obscure. I know they're joining the club as a joke, but these characters aren't feigning ignorance. They really are so stupid that I can't believe they're not wearing their pants as a shirt. Need more evidence of their stupidity? The cast is incredible. Yeah, uh, Bill Murray? Bill Murray's always right? good. Garfield? Have you ever seen a movie where he's bad? Of course Garfield is their go-to Bill Murray example. Now that that's over, Rebecca can get ready for her date with Lorenzo's son, Victor. Getting dark. Be back soon. I won't be long. It's two in the afternoon. You couldn't have shaded the windows? Victor takes antidepressants and they're shooting it in slow motion, so you know the movie considers this to be a bad thing. Victor and Rebecca have one thing in common, their shitty taste in music. It's going to be dark soon. Now she can tell Victor all about God and the heavenly glow. I don't know, I just, I want to learn more about that glow. It's kind of a God thing. Ooh, snobby Christian girl. You wouldn't understand God. I know what that glow is. It's that angle they're using so the sun can point out which character is the more Christian of the two. 
And don't forget about that depression foreshadowing. Everybody gets depressed. Yeah, I get that, but not like me. I get angry. I don't know. It's just, sometimes I just want to go to sleep and just never wake up, you know? Oh, thank God. This movie's going to get into mental health. Oh, this is going to be hilarious. Have you been to a doctor? Yeah, they gave me pills. It just makes me worse. Then he should probably be on something else. Anyway, back to the God's Club of the title. If we are going to be a club, then we need a shirt, right? Nope, bullshit. That is not a Lloyd-approved shirt. But Michael really knows how to get these students' attention. What do you think of that for a Bible? Sick, it's a comic book. It's a graphic novel, idiot. Sick! A 60-year-old man wrote this. Seriously. Today, they all learn about who Matthew is. Matthew. He's one of the dudes that hung out with Jesus, right? I think I saw him in a movie once. You know that, but not that the Bible is about Christianity or what the resurrection is. Later, their car breaks down and, uh-oh, evil atheist dad gang. Is it time for a fight? I think it is. Or, you know, maybe they'll be perfectly reasonable. Where are you going? To your God Club, huh? Where was God when your wife died, huh? <laughs> of course, they're not going to be reasonable. Don't forget, this movie is a fantasy. Where's the Stephen Baldwin I've been asking for? It's time to get you out of here, Italian Michael Ian Black. Now the mean girls need to get their revenge on Stephen Baldwin for punching asshole dad. Careful, girls. It's gonna be daylight soon. And this is the worst kind of revenge. Coating the classroom with toilet paper and spray painting worst teacher on the board. No, think of his self-esteem. Who do you think did this? People who lack originality. And the bullying doesn't stop there. Are they gonna paint worst student on her head? Hey, Piggy, here comes your BFF. She's gonna make you feel all better. She wouldn't steal your boyfriend. Any boy would even want you, Piggy. You two are cliche and dumb. Again, a 60-year-old man wrote this. I'm trying to figure out if that's a fake beard on Lorenzo's face or if it just has a crusted edge for some reason. No time for yelling at Michael. The teen girl version of 3 o'clock high is going on outside. This is completely unrealistic. She needs to go to prom and set everyone on fire. Now they're both in huge trouble. Somebody could have gotten hurt. You're gonna have to apologize. Apologize? For what? I didn't do anything. You heard what I said. Stephen Baldwin is superb as Michael Evans. The two of them get suspended, but luckily they don't have to turn in their badges and guns. A shitty day calls for a shitty joke. Why is it that girls pull hair when they fight? Babe, that's a mystery. <laughs> now that's a joke worthy of Mike Huckabee's Twitter account. Meanwhile, at Victor's therapy session, which is shot in impressive security camera vision, we get more of this movie's lectures on antidepressants. Prozac. They prescribed you Prozac. Is it helping? Not at all. I can't do a Rubik's Cube anymore. Victor seems like an actor who is only in this movie because he didn't pass his David Dakota audition. Anyway, they were talking about girls, right? Well, for one thing, there's not going to be any um, hanky-panky before marriage. Oh yeah, Christian girls wait. Could you not look like you have an erection when talking about that? And if you thought this girl fight ended with them rolling around on the ground and pulling hair, think again. Steal my boyfriend, will you? If you can't stand the heat, then get out of the kitchen. Hoo <laughs> someone got their insults from Mama's family. Also, yes, the Christian family is hate-crimed when Molotov cocktails are thrown at their house, which fills it with CGI smoke, the worst kind of smoke. All of these digital effects splooges, I'm suddenly reminded of the Justice League trailer. But have no fear, Paul Logan is here! It was a false alarm. Paul was only called in because he was told it was a mega piranha incident. But Michael has graduated from worst teacher to worst teacher ever! For the love of God, someone teach these girls some vulgarities! 
Victor tries to apologize for the whole vandalism thing, which doesn't go over well. Hey, Mark 1125. Oh yeah? Well, John 713. I don't know what that is, but fuck you. It gets to a point where I don't even understand half of their analogies. I don't think I could sacrifice you for all the Bible studies in the world. Oh, then why is her middle name Isaac? And in the department of why is this person being treated like a villain, Lorenzo Lamas is pissed that Victor quit his medication. This? This isn't gonna help you, son. You have chemical, emotional, physical issues. That's not gonna help you. Yeah, well, Rebecca told me the prayer works. Makes sense. Rebecca is a doctor. See, look how much better he is going off his meds. You know, I'm real angry right now. I just feel like dying. Well, that's because you quit your medication, cold turkey. Ah, just pray that away. Or do what everyone else does, spend time in the hospital, give up hard drugs, and then years later do a funny vlog on YouTube about it. You could call it Once Upon a Time When I Was in God's Club. Anyway, in the actual plot of the film, the school board votes for Michael to keep his job, and yes, the Bible Club stays too. I know, the box cover already told me that! Given that this is a town completely made up of stereotypical evil movie atheists, I'm surprised they just don't give one of them a Starbucks shirt. Oh, and back to those bad analogies. Well, I don't particularly like the idea of a French club because I don't like the idea of eating snails. What? Uh, huh? First of all, you have some issues with the French? And secondly... Uh... Does the French club just sit around and talk about snails? But Michael plays the dead wife card and watch for evil dad's ugh face. And I also want to share with all of you that on the night my wife passed away, I was with her. Ugh! But don't forget the moral here. Unless you're deeply religious, you're a miserable sack of shit, and your life is depressing. And the truth is, statistics show that young people who have a solid foundation of faith, you know what, they make better choices in life and they live happier and healthier. Okay, can we all agree that you can be perfectly happy while being religious or non-religious? And by the way, when I think of movies like God's Not Dead or Last Ounce of Courage or God's Club, I don't exactly think movies made by happy people. Happy people don't typically have victim complexes. All it takes is teen suicide to put an end to this debate. I really don't feel good. Come here. No, I'm sick of everyone. I'm sick of everybody that lives here. I'm sick of this town. I'm sick of everything right now, okay? You should probably see a doctor, and not an anti-pharmaceutical movie doctor. Lorenzo and Michael team up to find Victor and Rebecca after Victor leaves a suicide note. And now she's got him brainwashed into thinking that he can replace his medication with prayer. It's... You, man, you've caused this whole mess. What kind of medication? Is he gonna be okay? Well, yeah, he's right. Why is Lorenzo Lamas the villain here? Damn it, Rebecca, you can't save Victor from killing himself if you're running in slow motion. No, Victor, don't jump in the water. It's not that deep. It's a really good thing that this is one of the lesser known movies of its kind because, um, let's just say the movie's views on mental health are akin to War Room's views on marriage counseling. Hey. Listen, if you kill yourself, you can't go to heaven. Yeah? How do you know? <laughs> well, the Bible doesn't say anything about career suicide. Also, <laughs> Victor is saved from jumping through the power of prayer. That's quite a gamble you took there. God took a break from his dinner date with David A.R. White. And all it took to make everyone in the community a Christian is a chemically imbalanced student who really needs inpatient therapy. It all concludes with Victor reading his favorite Bible passage. And the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Ephesians chapter 6. Are you sure that's Ephesians? I'm pretty sure Ephesians is not the last page of the Bible. He gets a slow-mo applause, even if some of them still look smug as shit about it. And what the hell is Pizza Delivery Movie Director doing there? Well, that sure was a powerful film with a theme of forgiveness. I am no longer trusting you, Dove.org! The movie is your prototypical persecution complex film, 
The religious family wants to start their own Bible club, but come under such scrutiny to the point to where Molotov cocktails are thrown at their house. Oh yeah, no one gets arrested for that, by the way, because Stephen Baldwin forgives them. Arsony and attempted murder? Ha, <laughs> whatever. But the biggest jaw-dropper of the movie is certainly its themes about depression and mental illness. Now, of course, what works for some may not necessarily work for others in terms of religion or medication, but this movie throws such a huge blanket statement over that issue that I'm pretty sure that blanket is coated with viruses. Long story short, there are far better religious movies out there that you could be watching. My life's been tubular since I found Christ, bro. Asking people to convert hasn't been working. How can I force people to believe? Jesus, bro. Maybe the lesson is there's no lesson at all.